talk about losing someone that we highly respect. But uh, here it goes. Robbie Steinhardt, 71 years old, violinist, original member of Kansas, has passed away. There was just been a statement released. Um, actually, John Wetton, his widow, had just posted this on, on Facebook. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to, he had uh, acute pancreatitis. I'm going to go to what the family said so that you guys are up to date with it. Our final journey started May 13th when Robbie was admitted into hospital with acute pancreatitis. Later that night, he went into acute septic shock and was placed on life support. Outlook was very good and wasn't expected to live through the night. Uh, like a true fighter he is, he managed to spring back, much to our amazement, um, and the entire medical staff. Once again, he cheated death and the road recovery had begun. Now, 65 days later... Hold on, we're in my place here. Um, on the day that he was released from medical care and moved to a rehabilitation center, he built up strength, his body had other plans. Um, a fever set in, blood pressure became uncontrollable, and sepsis uh, reared its ugly head. This is from Cindy, his wife. The medical staff at Tampa General stabilized him. He greeted me with a smile, open arms, and kisses. His daughter, Becky, called. They had a beautiful, happy conversation together. Six minutes later, as I held him to keep him warm, he died in my arms, 6.30 p.m. Saturday, July 17th, 2021. We are beyond devastated as our lives were about to start a new adventure. Robbie just recorded his first solo album with a talented music producer, Michael Franklin, at Solar Studios. I'm sure we'll hear that at a later time. A tour to start in August. Robbie was looking forward to being back on stage. Um... I've always tried to share our lives with you, but I ask you to please read this heavy time of grief right now. I encourage you to share your stories and pictures of Robbie. My only regret is I can't share them with him to show him how much he is loved. Hugs, hug your loved ones, be happy, stay safe. This is from Cindy Steinhardt, Robbie's wife via Facebook. So he was a founding member of uh, a vocalist, a violinist of, um, of Kansas, and, and a huge part of, of that, that monstrous sound that they had. Uh, and again, uh, you know, we, we talk about death a little bit too much on this channel because it's happened to us an awful lot. Um, let me just go to YouTube so I can read your messages when, you, when it comes up. Um, you know, we're in the process of ourselves of moving to the East Coast. And... Uh, I don't know, I just got a message from someone. And uh, everyone's letting me know about this. I'm getting a lot of messages from people saying, hey, did you hear about this? And well, well we're actually reporting on it right now. So, uh, Tim, um, Adam says, rest in peace. Tim P says, good morning, John. Another sad day in music history. Robert Adams, hello. Hi, Robert. Yeah, the death thing seems to be surrounding us. I mean, as we're, uh, we did a post a little while ago about how stressful it was for us to move to the East Coast from the West Coast. And th this is, this is nothing. I mean, nothing cheats, nothing beats death. And, and, um, you know, growing up in my little bedroom, you know, Point of No Return and, and Left Overture were two albums. Uh, Monolith, I loved as well. And uh, hold on, let me get to, we, there we go. This is kooky, this internet connection. I don't know why the internet connection is so bad. There we go. I'm trying to get this. You know when you're moving, everything goes wrong? Hold on. There we go. We're back, I think. Are we back? Yeah. Hi, folks. I see myself. Uh, pancre uh, Martin Martin, Marty Martin, he had pancreatitis and went into septic shock. I don't know why it's telling me this so much. 
I see myself here, so I know that we're back on. It, it's, um, sorry about this, folks. I don't know why this is happening. Where I'm in my basement. We used to have uh, all these albums surrounding us, but because we're moving. So be, for the folks who didn't, didn't get the information, sorry about the lighting. It's all our lighting's down. I'm going to read this to you so that you know what happened. This is from Cindy, his widow. He was 71 years old, by the way. Our final journey started May 13th when Robbie was admitted to the hospital with acute pancreatitis. Uh, later that night, he went into uh, acute septic shock and was placed in, in, on life support. Now, he wasn't expected to live at that point. They didn't think he would. But like a true fighter, I'm paraphrasing, uh, that he is, he managed to spring back, much to the amazement of, well, the family and the medical staff. But 65 days later, on the day he was released from the hospital, um, to move to a rehabilitation center. Uh, his body had other plans, she writes. Um, a fever set in, blood pressure became uncontrollable, and sepsis reared its ugly head. Uh, the medical staff at Tampa General stabilized him. He greeted me with a smile, open arms. His daughter, Becky, they had a long conversation together. Six minutes later, she says, I held him to keep him warm, and he died in my arms, 6.30 p.m. this past weekend, this past Saturday, July 17th, 2021. So... You know, we're talking about a guy who was um, uh, the, part of the groundbreaking team as a violinist and a vocalist of Kansas. You couldn't love Kansas without, you know, having some kind of relationship with uh, with this man. It's amazing. Steinhardt is amazing. He was releasing a solo album. I should mention that. And he was ready to, to, to go on tour in August. It was all ready. And then this happens, you know. As she put at the very bottom, hug your loved ones, be happy, stay safe, and be well. Because when you lose someone, you start realizing how important this whole machine that we're living in is, you know. And and uh, and I've said this every time I do an obituary, and I'll get to the notes. I see people are commenting. Every time we do an obituary, I always say the same thing, and you know it's true that we're going to get a lot more of this. This is going to happen a lot more um, because of the age of our heroes. Most of them are what? Depending upon, I'm 61. Most of my heroes are uh, at least 60 years, uh, 10 years older than I am. So let me get to the comments. Um, I've never seen Kansas, but uh, Mutant Riot Ref says, saw them once in the 70s, San Francisco Bay. Uh, Alice sings, uh, I really love Kansas. So sorry, music community. Uh, uh, Tim P. Hi, Tim. Carry on, Wayward Son. True classic. Yeah, no kidding. You know, on Point of No Return um, and Left Overture, I drew that cover when I was when I was in high school for my girlfriend, Dawn, who's still a really good friend of mine. But um, I remember the, the attention to detail that it took to, to draw that cover. Um, Marty Martin, he was sick. Yes, I, I read that for most of you guys. Uh, Marty Martin says, oh, right, could have been a, well, we don't know. We don't, we don't want to speculate if he was a heavy drinker. A lot of rockers have spent at least some time being uh, partiers. You know, it comes with the territory, when in Rome thing. Yeah, violinist, dust in the wind. That's right, Marty. Tim P, sad news. Um, not a great way to go. Agreed. Yeah, Tepid Tooth 85. I would have so uh, yeah, I've, I would have seen him too. There's a video on YouTube of him getting off stage and being interviewed as he gets off stage. You, you might want to look it up. Uh, I haven't seen it in a few years, so but I remember thinking he's so close to the camera and you really get a chance to sort of say, "Hey, there he is." You know? Yes, Jeff uh, uh from Cinderella died a few days ago. He was 58. I was in the middle of a move, just so that you know, just so that you guys know, and I don't want to make this about me, please, but that this is our this is our basement now, and there's the real to real everyone always sees when I'm doing my interviews. It's just we're ready to move, so that's why some of the obituaries I have I have uh, let me get a little closer. Some of the obituaries I have um, sort of missed out on. Uh, no no disrespect to anyone. I remember when um, who was it. Um, was it Chuck Berry? I forget who it was when passed away and someone 
someone had uh, passed away and someone said, oh, you're a racist because, and I was just going through depression. I, I, I couldn't do an obituary. I was just going through my own thing uh, a few years ago. I, I forget who it was. Anyway, um, uh, Tepid Tooth says, I'm going to go blast Iron Maiden in celebration of their new album. I think that Kansas is going to be heavily blended in throughout that playlist. Well, good. I, I um, I'm reading the comments here. Uh, Tim P, 59 here. And sucks watching all the great ones slowly pass. Agreed. It's a strange thing. Um, iconic being young, listening to these greats. Sorry, I'm paraphrasing some of these. This one hurts badly. This is Jim Evanson. Hi, Jim. I'm a huge fan of Kansas. Uh, rest in peace, Robbie. Marty Martin, yeah, heard new song. It's okay. Um, 33 Jazz. Sorry to hear the news. Kansas was a big favorite in the 70s. Yeah, I, their last album was amazing. I mean, Robbie wasn't on that. Um, and we interviewed uh, Mr. Brislin, um, a new, the newest member of the band at the time, and uh, just loved it. I mean, it's nice to hear some of our heroes. This lighting is really bad. Um, you know, uh, 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 putting out some good music. But And Robbie had an album coming out. He had finished the album, by the way, just so that, that we're... And so we're going to hear it because the album is finished. As far as releasing plans, I don't know how locked in they were. Uh, that obviously his wife Cindy's going to have to grieve this for a while. You know, some people say, I remember I had a friend uh, in Vancouver who lost his wife. Her name was Marilyn, I remember, because I always, uh, I word associate to remember names sometimes, and I always thought of Marilyn Monroe. And, and uh, his name was Ted, this man, Ted Barrett. And Ted came up to me and he said, they say it takes five years to get over losing a, a, uh, a loved one. And he says it's been, I don't know how many years it had been at that point that he had lost his wife, but it takes a long time. You know what I mean? Um... So it's it's a it's a tough gig. We all know that. A lot of us have been through this. Hold on, let me see if I can if I can. Oh, am I locked sideways? Hold on, hold on. I can't believe I'm locked sideways. Can I do this? Am I locked sideways, guys? Because I'm looking on my thing. And I'm locked sideways. Okay, there he goes. This is better. I've uh, I had no idea I was locked sideways that whole time. Crazy but true. Okay, let's read some comments. Sorry about being locked sideways. That is crazy. Yeah, he was an original member. Queen. Nice to nice to have you back. Um. He had a great voice, and he had a, one of those voices that could could was um, could belt out you know a lot of different things. Could get soft, you know. Great violin player. Uh, Tepa Tooth. I'm not sure where you can find it. It's uh, Lisa Wetton, who's John Wetton's wife. I got to know her while John was sick, because I did a, a tribute to John while he was sick, and I guess he saw it. Um, cause he announced that he was sick and then a few days later he died. And Lisa had told me, she said, John, uh, we share your tribute, your nice tribute, but the, the other singer, you've included the, the other singer, as you put it, from, uh, Asia, um, on, on some of your roll, rollout. You know, the, the, I used to have albums in the back of me when I used to talk. I still, I still do that. But anyway, so Lisa Wetton, also look up, look up his name. And you'll find it under news on Google. And basically, it is the announcement from Cindy, his widow, uh, talking about this. Sorry, I'm having to hold my, uh, I don't mean for it to shake. Okay. Tim P, finally. I had no idea. Did anybody tell me that I was sideways? God. Uh, Derek Vaughn. I saw Kansas early days with Ambrosia opening. A great loss. Ambrosia used to be a prog band back then. Remember uh, the first few albums? Um, I, I, uh, 
I interviewed Burley Drummond, their drummer. He's still with the band. And we, we talked about the, uh, that early proggy Ambrosia stuff. Uh, Clayton Medley. Robbie was amazing. Saw Kansas. Uh, with John, uh, I don't know how to say his name, Elephant. And then again with Steve Walsh. Um, they were amazing both times. Robbie and all of them were just amazing to me. Oscar Stern, he will be missed. My favorite guitar hero gamer. Tim P, at, at least one of the East Coast, you won't be getting choked out by all the smoke of the daily basis. I walked, I just walked five kilometers, 5.4 kilometers with the dogs this morning. We're in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. We're moving to uh, New Brunswick in uh, just above Maine in, um, in Canada. Um, $20,000 move, but what are you going to do? But anyway, don't want to make this about my move. Yeah, I, I always appreciated Robbie because of the fact, and I mentioned this a while ago, about the, his versatility as a, a, a vocalist where he could, you know, he could he go, he could crunch it, man, or he could go real soft, right? Tina Taylor. Wow, I can't believe he's gone. All the good ones I grew up with are leaving us. And, and Tina, that's what we're talking about, the fact that um, they all have at least 10 years on us. Most of us, you know, most of us who are, watching this right now our heroes you know there's that that did you see the the there's a picture circulating ever since eddie van halen died which is um i'm paraphrasing again he says you know if you miss me just turn on the music and you guys will know what what exactly he said and he's just looking at the the camera so innocently and of course that's not a message from him but they could have been right so a lot of people will be listening to kansas because uh, on top of the fact that they were such uh, laden with violins, you know, this band. It was such a great vocalist. So Queen says, so many uh, great musicians dying in the last year and a half. You know, we all talk about 2006 and how awful 2006 was. And we lost, uh, I think, was it Bowie and Glenn Fry and uh, 16, rather, 2016, that's what I meant, sorry. We all talk about that, but now almost every year is is becoming kind of like that. You know, we're, it's, it's, it's just one after another, after another. And I'm surprised we haven't lost more from COVID. I'm glad we haven't, but um, JW Primetime. I live in Clearwater, where Robbie lives. Seen him all the time for years. Such a nice guy. Well, see, isn't that nice to hear? Yeah. Uh, Tepatooth. Yeah, Child of Innocence is one of my favorites. Uh, Osh Master D. Robbie was part of a transcending wave of violinists, well said, as full-time members of rock bands, alongside with uh, uh, Mick Kaminsky of ELO. Tim P, 28K. Not, I don't think it's 28K. It's, uh, our move is, I think it's uh, about 20,000 to move to the East Coast. Just so that you know, if anybody's doing that, it was thinking of moving from, you know, the, the, the in our case, the, not the, the most Western spot, which is British Columbia, but Alberta. It's, it's a, an expensive move. Cost 4.5K uh, uh, to move two cars on a train across the country. Um... Yes, Clayton139, well said. Robbie Steinhardt made Kansas uh, music even bigger and better. Well, well said. I mean, it's one of the uh, one of the reasons that I like Kansas, really. I mean, being a fiddle fan, coming, I'm from originally from uh, um, New Brunswick, where, uh, it, uh, let me see if I can put this phone someplace so I'm not shaking so much. How about that? Sorry about that, guys. I was just shaking like crazy. Coming from the East Coast, where fiddle music is really, really big. And I know that's not fiddle music. That's violin music, as people would say. Let me see if I can do this right. Um, but I've always had, uh, and I wanted to play the violin because of how much I love fiddle, you know, Don Messer's Jubilee and all this stuff we had in Canada when I was growing up. But all those guys who were doing real, you know, they, they, they play reels. And, and so I ended up loving the violin. And when... Uh, I first heard Jean-Luc Ponty. I remember going, wow, this is the greatest thing. And then then Kansas. Then I heard Kansas. And I went, my, this is Prague. I was already a Prager at that time. You know, when you look at one of the most intricate 
interesting, innovative kind of songs. When you first heard Carry On Wayward Son, I mean, what was your reaction? When you first heard Left Overture and you go, wow. And then you go, oh, they've got other albums before that. Because I'd never heard of the band before, uh, um, you know, Point of Return and Left Overture. So then you go back. You know, when I discovered Elton John, I managed to realize, that, oh, they, wow, he's got other albums. I didn't know he had other albums. And that's a great thing about growing up in the 70s. You might, a band might have, like Kansas, not a big uh, breakthrough, you know, until a few albums in. And then you hear them and you go, oh, and I can go and buy the other ones, you know? I also love Monolith. Monolith was one of my favorites. I would just gone to, I just moved to um, Alberta. Uh, my first time in Alberta. I've been here twice. Okay. Tepa Tooth 85. People only really talk about uh, Wayward Son and Dust and not all those bad songs. Not that these are bad songs. They have so many different great songs. Child of Innocence, The Wall, Paradox. Um, rest in peace, Florence Dahl. Thank you for coming in. If school wasn't out, I'd be like last October when I when I had my mic muted first period in virtual economics and I had pound cake blasting. <laughs> oh. So we were just talking to Joseph Williams about the one of the models on pound cake for uh, the video who was also on um I think the Pamela video by Toto that and because I was the the we're working on the Joseph Williams thing today where we talk about the real Pamela, who the real Pamela was, and the Pamela who acts, the main actress in Pamela the video. So anyway, it's another topic. Well, yeah, that's true. You know, when you mention um, some of our rock stars are our parents' age, you know, and a lot of us being, if you're watching this channel, you, you, you're digging this kind of music. Um, you're around my age, I'm 61. And so sometimes when our rock stars die and you find out their age, you go, oh, that's the age of my parents. Of course, they're going to die. There's a thing about rock stars where you think they're going to last forever. You think they're, they're just, just, you know, they're bigger than life. They're larger than life. Sometimes when you meet them, they're a lot shorter than you think. But when they're on stage, they're larger than life. They're up there. They're huge. They're communicating with 30,000 people, you know, and, and you think they're going to live forever. You know, when I was doing the obituary, I did an obituary for Eddie Van Halen. Then we came on live and talked about it. And I remember we got like 200 subscribers right off the bat. And by the way, if you're just tuning in right now, not that I want to sell the channel, but we, all we do is interviews with the exception of live feeds. It's all the interviews with rock stars. And if you like, please subscribe. But, um, but when we were talking about Eddie Van Halen with a live feed, we talked about losing people a lot. That's what we talked about. Not necessarily only about Eddie. And I, and I recognize the fact that the people who were watching had all lost so many people. If you're my age, you've lost people in your life. It's almost impossible not to have lost people. And then there's another layer of that, of losing your favorite rock stars. And then you realize that the, the, the music is, uh, they're dying, but the music's not dying. You know what I mean? The, the, the music's there. It'll always be there. And I know that sounds cliche to say that. I understand that, but it's true. You know, uh, how much people will be listening to Kansas today? I think a lot of folks, right? Unfortunately, all my CDs are packed because we're ready to move across the country. But, but I've got, um, I've got Spotify and things like that. So let's read some comments. Oh, low battery. That's great. That's great. Low battery. I'm going to have to go here pretty soon, guys. Uh, Tina Taylor. Hi, Tina. I loved it when Robbie nailed it on Dust in the Wind. Steve and Robbie vocals were amazing. They really were. And I think the, the it's hard for, for some fans to uh, listen to new versions of their old bands with new lead singers. I've always had a problem with that. Um, but if the music's still good, I'd go see them. So that's been my thing with Kansas. But their last album, last few have been good, but their last album, I really, really loved it. Uh, Tepa285, your channel is fantastic, John. Man, I wish I could do something like this. Well, you can. Just do it. Talk about rock and roll. Talk about it like you mean it. Um, 
it took me a while, you know, been a radio 38 years, it took me a while to get comfortable behind the microphone and just go, oh, this is just like recording. I mean, I record my radio show with one of these, believe it or not, a, a major market recording, I, I record a major market radio station with this and it sounds fantastic. This is what I use because my radio station computer is right here and I do that every night. Um, Tepa Tooth. The first death that really affected me was Neil Peart. Not that my grandparents dying didn't, but it's just, I was a little, uh, I was too little back then to really comprehend it. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. When John Lennon died, it hit me harder than some family members. And you can't help that. It's not like, oh, what are you crazy? Get your You can't help how you feel. You feel the way you feel, you know? Uh, Queen, uh, yeah, moving across the country, we just need a change. Uh, plus, if, if we're, we all have, we're all fully vaccinated, but if my wife got um, COVID, even with vaccination, she has an autoimmune disease, it would not be a good thing. Plus, we needed a change. We just, we don't want to live in the West anymore. We want to. I, uh, uh, Tepa Tooth, I emailed Gene Simmons about a month ago and got him to talk in my high school class on the last day of school. No joke. What? Wow. Oscar Stern. I even played the violin part on Dust in the Wind on the Albert, um, I don't know how to say that. After repairing it, Bismarcky died the day before it. Oh, wow. Machinery Man 71. Down the Road is a really good vocal performance from Robbie, also kick-ass violin. Yeah. Another, you know, it's another moment in time and, and, and for anyone who really loved and appreciated what Robbie did, this is one of those days where you'll always remember this, right? You'll remember coming on here maybe, or you'll remember playing uh, um, Kansas on a, on a different note. Everyone who listens to Kansas today, it's, it's different now, a little different. The music's still great, but it's almost like we're looking at the center of the pie from a different angle now when you, when you listen to it with the intent of loving it from a memory that wherever you were and then realizing that he's dead, that he's not with us anymore. The music is, but it changes things a little bit when you listen to music uh, under the context, I guess, of someone dying. I'm putting too many words into that, but... Um, a Cardinal Tommy Wolsey, Kansas was my campfire go-to. Oh, there you go. Thank you for all your comments. I appreciate that. So um, I don't know how much battery life I have. I'm going to read this quickly to you guys again. This is from Cindy, his wife. I think I, I'd be remiss if I didn't read this one more time. I'm running out of power here, so I'm not sure what happens when your power runs out on YouTube. But this is from Cindy again. She wrote, our final journey started May 13th when Robbie was admitted to the hospital with acute pancreatitis. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here. Later that night, uh, he went into acute septic shock and was placed in life, on life support. Outlook wasn't good, but like a true fighter that he is, he managed to bounce back and it amazed, I guess, the family, of course, and the uh, medical staff. I've read this a few times, so I know it. 65 days later, on the day he was released from, from uh, the hospital... He went, he was ready to go into a rehabilitation center. A fever set in, blood pressure became uncontrollable, and sepsis reared its ugly head. The medical staff at Tampa General stabilized, stabilized him. He greeted me with a smile, open arms, and kisses. His daughter, Becky, they had a beautiful chat together. Six minutes later, as I held his hand to keep him warm, held him to keep him warm, sorry. He died in my arms, 6.30 p.m. this past Saturday, Saturday, July 17th, 2021. So we are beyond devastated. He he was going to start touring in August, had a brand new album, his first solo album, uh, set to be released. We're not sure about the time date. I'm not sure how locked in they were with all that, as I mentioned a while ago. So chances are, if he was going on tour in August, everything's set to go. And chances are that's not going to be uh, released any later than it was supposed to. He was 71 years old with Kansas, 73 to 82, and 97 to 2006. Big part of that early Kansas sound. As I said, you couldn't love Kansas unless, without loving his vocals and, 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 and his violin be, and because it was such a big part of it. So if you love Kansas, you loved Robbie. So may he rest in peace. One, looking at the comments one more time, then we, I'm going to have to start packing. We have um, a big metal box coming in to get, grab all our furniture.
so many are, this is from uh, full stop 213. So many are passing. When we were younger, life seemed to have no end. Now I'm 69, looking 70 square in the face. Uh, you know, the, every artist I talk to, and remember, if you're here because you don't know this channel, all we do is interviews, with the exception of live broadcasts like this. Um, when I talk to artists, I always say, man, it's been a long journey. Look at, look at you now, looking back. To, could you have imagined this? And they all say the same thing, pretty much. When you're 20 years old, you never think of being 60. Why would you? It's not even in your grasp. It's not like you don't have perspective to do that. Some people do, but you don't. Why? Why would you do it? You don't imagine that. I mean, the Beatles did it when I'm 64. But, and then, then you're 60 and it, it creeps up on you. And then your brain processes time faster as you get older. That's dumbing it down a little bit. It's a more complicated than that. But time goes faster. You know, I'm 61. All of a sudden I go, man, it seems like yesterday that COVID started. So it creeps up on you. And it, and it all of a sudden your, your heroes are dying and um, your family is getting sick. Not that I want to be a downer, but that's just the way it goes, right? And um, yeah. John, you are leaving? No, I'm, I'm moving to the East Coast, but I'm continuing doing this. The reason I haven't put out a lot of videos lately is because we're packing and the stress of trying to find a house on the East Coast has been insane, insane. The hardest, one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life. Plus it's gonna cost us over $20,000 to move. So I'm not moving with a job because we can live anywhere. I do my radio job uh, from my home and then I have YouTube and uh, Shannon's last day at her job is today. And we have two weeks left in this house. We will never be in this house again. We sold it in one day. So there you go. Anyway, don't make this about me. Time goes faster. Yeah, it does. You, time, you, you, we're, we process time so much different. But meanwhile, my 17-year-old son says, oh my God, time's going by so slowly. And I'm going, not for me, it isn't. My brain's a little different than yours. Uh, Tor, Tor, Porco. Hey, hello. Nice to have you back. Thank you for doing this in the middle of your move. You help give meaning to the music. Thank you. Tim P. Agreed. Queen says, do you find your house? Yes, we did, but house inspection. Old, We bought a house built in 1951. I'll say this quickly because it's not about me. But uh, uh, built in 51, and right now we're having metal people with metal detectors looking to see if there's oil tank or an oil tank underneath this house that we bought. Same size as this one, 1,826 square feet. Uh, but unlike this one, it, it, does, it has a, a detached garage. One that, so we're excited about it. It's an old house. I'll take you guys on a tour when we get there. It's kind of funky. We wanted a house with character, but I've got to go because I'm running out of, uh, um, I'm running out of, uh, of um, thank you, Queen. Thank you very much. We're, uh, we're, we're putting everything in one of those big metal boxes. What do you call those things? Um, big steel box. We're moving with them. And the train is taking both of our cars. So there you go. That's what we're up to. That's why I'm not releasing a lot of videos. We're, we will release some today because I'm so far behind and slowly our income on YouTube is going because I'm not releasing new videos. Uh, um, so we will, we have to, because we have to make money. So uh, that's, um, no. people are, I'm getting so many messages here. Oh, well, I'm not asking for money, DM, but thank you. I appreciate that. That's very nice of you. Um, we get a lot of super chats when we do the long ones. We don't usually get super chats when we're talking about people who passed away. And I can understand that because people aren't thinking about supporting our channel in that way. Anyway, continue to buy uh, t-shirts, continue to support our channel, click the bell notification. Uh, Robbie was 71, by the way, some people are asking, he was 71 years old and uh, one of the greats gone. Anyway, take care of yourselves, guys. Sorry I was sideways for a lot of the video, but uh, we'll talk to you real soon. I'll try to do more updates on uh, our move and... Um, Take good care of yourself. Stay safe.